cut it. <laughs> Quick little 20 second intro or whatever it was for the uh, intro of the video. What's the name of that song if you guys know where I'm coming from? One of the classic all time groups that I love. But anyways, what's up YouTube? It's your boy, Staff Sergeant Calhoun. I'm coming at you live right now. I won't be live by the time you see this video. Uh, you're gonna ask, probably, since the mask mandate is dropped, why am I wearing a mask? I'll tell you why. I just came from a training course from my other uh, job, my part-time job. And at that job, the mask is required. So I had it on. Here's my, this is my work ID of the other, the other place. So uh, I just, this past weekend was the Long Beach Grand Prix in, in the city of Long Beach, right? And I worked that for my other job. So it was the weekend, like, I think I was there Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So UPS, I was there Thursday, got off work at 10.45 or so, shoot over to Long Beach, got a clock in by midnight, worked until nine in the morning the next day. And then, uh, that was Thursday. And then Friday, work all day, and then at that, in Long Beach, then go to the UPS hub, and then Saturday, work all day, and then I'm off Sunday, Saturday night. Then Sunday, work all day at the Long Beach Grand Prix, and then I was, again, off from UPS. And then Monday, back to UPS, but there was nothing else going on. So this week, there's training for me at my other job, which is I do security, uh, so we do like VIP stuff, like uh, concerts. Uh, there was a concert, matter of fact, at the Long Beach Grand Prix, and I worked that, that was really cool. DMC from Run DMC was there. I got to shake his hand. Uh, I met a bunch of other celebrities as well. McGrath from Sugar Ray, uh, somebody from Offspring, some other people were there. So we were doing that that, that concert and then the Grand Prix uh, was there. Look that up on uh, YouTube, Long Beach Grand Prix. You'll see that for 2022. Cool event, made some extra money. Like I'm saying uh, on the last video, these are things I do to fill in the pay gaps because UPS is a part-time job. As you guys all know, you start off part-time. This is the formula, this is how they do it. It's a test, man, because it's a, it's tough. It's hard to make a living, you know, working five hours a day, especially in Southern California with the gas prices, inflation, you got all kinds of stuff going on this war in Ukraine. Gas prices are higher. God bless Ukraine, by the way. So, um, side hustles, right? Um, I don't know what you do, but one thing I noticed about side hustles is, like for UPS, if that's going to be your, your career path, your mainstay, you want to be a driver, you want to be a, a manager, supervisor, whatever, or you want to get involved in sales, or whatever it is, a uh, full-time position at UPS, your side hustle should be flexible with that schedule so that you can always put UPS as the priority, right? So that's what I try to do. With security, I can do that because you work as as you see fit. Like if you want to work an event, you sign up for that event. If you don't want to work that event, don't sign up. Therefore, you you're, you have flexibility, but you're still getting more hours during the week. So because between the two jobs, between UPS and the other job, I'm still getting like 60 hours or, or so a week. Sometimes more, sometimes less, but that's an average. 60 hours a week, that's that's basically full time, right? And, and plus, full time plus. So if you're only making 16 an hour or 16.50 an hour, whatever it is, if you're getting 60 hours a week, you're, you're, you're able to get by. Um, luckily for my security position, I accepted a promotion there to be a supervisor, sergeant, whatever they call it there. Uh, for security and I, I'm in that training that's paid training that's why I'm doing this paid training now um, you know all the stuff that goes along with that you gotta get a California guard card which gives you the powers to detain somebody it gives you it teaches you the laws what you can and can't do and all that and it allows you to purchase equipment like batons pepper spray things like that because you're able to be trained to use those things to uh, 
protect yourself. It's basically what is self-protection. Um, so security work, that's one way. There's a lot of other side hustles, but security work is easy to get into. You just got to get a guard card. Uh, and that elevates your pay. I think they start you at, my company starts you at 15 an hour. If you have a guard card, it's 16 an hour. Then you become a supervisor, it's 20 an hour. So I decided to take the supervisor uh, training because 20 an hour is not bad. It's gonna pay, fill in those pay gaps. I'm only gonna get about 30 hours a week, but then I'm only getting 25 hours or so a week at UPS. So that's what, 55 hours a week. So that's good. And then sometimes I can get more than that. At the other job, I can get 35 hours in a week. Of, like I just did 30 hours this past weekend. So you know, it's, it's not hard to get those extra hours. You just gotta look. So uh, side hustles are important if you're gonna stay at UPS. I believe that they're, they're important because you need to fill in those gaps with all the rising cost of inflation and gas. I don't know how some people do it, but all right, off that note. So that's the side hustle part of this video. Uh, let me know what you guys do for your side hustle or if you're looking to get into side hustles, if you wanna stay at UPS. So um, here we are for me going into uh, almost 11 months now on, on board. Uh, it'll be 11 months for me in like a couple of weeks. And then, um, so there's no big milestones there yet. The next big milestone for me will be one year, which is coming up really, really, really quickly, like in six weeks for me, it'll be a year. So I'll get vacation, sick time, uh, sick leave, paid sick leave, paid vacations. I'll get like five vacation days and you get paid holidays and you get some personal days off where you could, you could pick whatever day you want off with pay and it's just considered a vacation day or whatever it is, like a, basically like a paid holiday or something. But it's a personal day off with pay, which is really cool. So. That being said, um, if you're close to a year, stick it out because all that extra time and money is going to really benefit you with your family to have time off. Again, if you've been with UPS for more than nine months, you have your medical, dental, vision. You just got to fill out the stuff and pick Kaiser or whatever you're going to pick, Blue Cross or whatever. But you have those benefits, medical, dental, vision after nine months. Um, after six months, I've told you guys this before. You can apply for any position within the hub, including driver, 224 driver, combo driver, and so forth. So I highly recommend you to apply for a position within the hub, including um, driver, uh, shifter driver, feeder driver, whatever they have available. Fill all, all that stuff. After six months, you, you can be considered uh, for those positions based upon your seniority. Everything is seniority based. That's just how it works. Um, Again, with me, I gotta have a side hustle because UPS is not enough to cover all the bills until I become a driver. Once you become a driver, you're gonna make, you know, 75 grand a year in the beginning and it goes up 80 grand, 90 grand. Some of the drivers are making 130, 140 because they like to work overtime. But your base is gonna be somewhere in the 80s, 80s, 90s, around there. Great career, great company benefits, right? So, um, hub activity. In, inside the hub, I work as a bulk package handler. You guys know this, I talk about it all the time. I like, I like being a bulk package handler. I also drive the AVG trains. Um, AGV, the AGV trains are automatic vehicles. You can program them and they cruise around the hub, but they can also be operated by an operator. You just gotta get certified, go through a class, and then boom, you're in. You gotta wear a, a reflective vest when you're inside the hub when you're driving those vehicles. It's a safety thing or whatever. Wear the reflective vest and just drive the, the uh, AVG safely, right? Uh, you don't get extra pay for it, but it's just something extra to do. It's an extra duty that I took on myself to help out, right? It gets me, I like staying busy. I wanna do more. Uh, I don't like being bored at work. So big shout out to everybody who's new. I already showed, told you guys last time about a, a good uh, worker named uh, JV, Junior Varsity. She's good to go, she's new, she just, uh, hit her milestone of 45 days working safely so shout outs to her we got a new girl on the floor uh yesterday was her second day her name is darby shout out to darby she's working metro on the uh, line two on metro uh she's trying to get her feel for it she had a rough day yesterday i remember telling her hey it's your second day on the floor don't worry just keep that blue vest on and let everybody know that you're brand new they'll give you a break okay but she didn't feel that way she felt like she wasn't getting a break 
and I understand UPS can be a rough environment. So let's talk about conflict resolution is my next my next topic. You know, we covered side hustles, we co we covered uh, uh, benefits like medical, dental, vision, sick time when you get a year on and vacation and all that, and we also covered uh, job opportunities within the hub, promotions and stuff like that, like driver, supervisor, manager. Um, AVG driver, AGV drivers. Um, you can, there's a lot of stuff you can do within the hub if you apply for it. So the next thing, conflict resolution. Since I've been there, I've seen a lot of stuff. I've seen people flare up at other people. They flared up at me a couple of times and you have to resolve it. You wanna get supervision involved. Bottom line, you do. Why? It's better to get them involved because it just protects you, right? Because if a supervisor gets involved, and they're aware of what's going on and you're being harassed or, or mistreated or talked to funny by another employee, now the supervisor is at least aware of it so that when something crazy happens, they can be like, oh yeah, this is uh, an ongoing issue. Let's, let's, we gotta re get this resolved, right? So something happened recently with me. Basically, I was working my area, which is bulk, bulk package, uh, working my butt off, man. I had, I had five of these big carts, these carts that carry the bulk. They're loaded to the hill and we gotta induct them, bring those over to induct. Uh, offload that stuff so that they can be scanned and then get that empty cart bring it back meanwhile I'm pulling off all the bulk off the line and it gets faster paced after the break the belt speeds up and I was working by myself for the most part because my partner was doing something else I usually have a partner so the guys that are pulling the bulk off the belt they're just dropping on the belt that's what they do they just boom 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 so then I got to pull it off and it's coming fast some of that stuff is heavy 80 90 pounds 100 pounds you're you're offloading large long pieces of steel or refrigerator type things or, or wine coolers or whatever is bulk just big oversized stuff that's awkward or big pieces of carpet that weigh 70 pounds or 80 pounds because anything bulk is at least 70 pounds or more so you're 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 at least lifting 70 pounds every time a bulk package comes down it's usually 70 or more pounds Sometimes it's 90 pounds, sometimes it's 120. I've lifted stuff off that's 150, 160 pounds. Some really heavy stuff. It, it's, it's a strain on your body. So that's why you gotta kill a lot of water. Well, one of the guys uh, that's there, he's a young guy. He's a little immature. I think he's 19 or 20. This is like his first real job. He came over and started giving me a bunch of grief. Like He's like a former football player in high school, so he has that tough guy kind of mentality, whatever, uh, you know. 21 years of the Marines, I'm not intimidated by anybody, especially some 19 year old kid. Bottom line, he yelled at me. I said, you know, I kind of yelled back. I got, I mean, because I'm going to step up. To, you got to step up to the plate and defend yourself and say, hey, man, you can't come at me like that. Don't come at me sideways. This is a professional organization. I don't care what's going on in your personal life. When you come yell at me, we're done. There is none of that. I'm not tolerating that. You don't have, no one should be tolerant, tolerant of, of being, be mean. De, you know, demeaned or belittled or yelled at while you're at work. So of course I raised my voice back. I'm not saying that's the thing to do, but that's what I did. Um, it got a little heated. Let's put it that way. It got a little heated because I, I did not like it. And I, I said something, I'm going to speak up for myself. That's just the way I was raised. That's the way I was brought up in the military. You got to stand up for yourself, defend yourself, right? Not physically. I'm not getting into a physical altercation where I'm going to fight. No, there's, it's not worth it. This is my career. It's my job. This kid's not worth it. But I'm going to let him know you picked the wrong guy to come try to test. Now, the supervisors got involved, and I'm letting them know I'm in my workspace. I'm, work, I'm in my work area doing my job. This guy came over to my area and is bothering me. You guys heard him get loud. Now you're hearing me get louder. If you guys want to do something about it, I suggest you tell him to go back to where he's supposed to work. He doesn't work in my area. He can't come tell me what to do. He's not a boss. Things like that happen at UPS. You're going to see stuff like this once in a while. Out of the 11 months now that I've been there, this has happened to me. This is probably the second time, but I've seen it happen to other people. But sometimes people will just cower down and go, okay, you know, that's not right because now you got people trying to bully you, boss you around that aren't supervisors and you shouldn't have to work in a hostile work environment. It's wrong. It's unprofessional. It's not right. The union can back you up. This is where your union comes into play. You got to have the shop steward's phone number. 
you got to get involved with, with management and say, look, man, I'm, I don't come to work for these petty little arguments and debates and to get, you know, somebody flare up at me or blow up at me who's just my peer, peer meaning another person who's my equal, another employee. So super, uh, when, when you're, if you've been there two years and another guy's been there one year, if you're there two years and somebody else is there one year, you don't have any authority over that person just because you've been there two years and they've been there one year. You just have more seniority. What's seniority for? That you get first dibs on positions that are available. Like if there's a driver position coming up and you want to drive and that person wants to drive, but there's only one driver position. The person with two years on will get first dibs. They're going to go ask him first, would you like the driver position because you've been here longer? If he says no, then it's going to go to the next person. That might be you and go, now you're next. Would you like the driver position? He turned it down and I'll say yes because I've been here a year. If I turned it down, they'd go to the next guy. Hey, you've been here nine months. Would you like to drive? That's what seniority is and that's how seniority works. Seniority is not about I tell you what to do because I've been here longer. That is a misnomer. It's a mis it's misunderstood by a lot of people who think, well, I've been here four years, so therefore I have, no, you're not a supervisor. You don't tell people what to do. We're all there as a team. We all are part of the Teamsters Union. We all have the same rights. So if you guys have issues with somebody in your hub being a, a hub bully, you got to talk to your union rep. You got to talk to supervision because it's inappropriate for them to do that. They cannot create a hostile work environment. They can't threaten you. None of that stuff. And this kid was trying to, he was trying to feel his oats and he was trying to test me. He just picked the wrong guy. So when it all push came to shove, they were like, Brian, you didn't do anything wrong. Keep working. You're working. You were working when we saw you. And we're gonna tell this kid not to come over and bother you. And I was like, that's all I'm asking. I'm in the middle of my work. I'm not here to necessarily make friends. I'm here to necessarily make a paycheck. Now, if I can, I'm a friendly guy. If I can befriend you and we can get along, sure, that's a benefit. I, I love that. I'd rather have that. But if you're gonna come to work with a, with a chip on your shoulder or a funky attitude, keep it over there, dude, because I'm here to work and do my job, make my money and go home. If you come to work and you try to test people and push people around or bully people or punk people, I think you need to mature up, grow up and get out of that workspace because people are there to feed their families, put paychecks in their bank accounts, and they're there to, you know, live, make a living. They're not there to go to some high school debate thing or, or who's the toughest kid on the block. If you have that type of immaturity in you, you shouldn't be working in a professional organization, not just UPS, any professional organization. Put your ego in, in the back seat and leave it there until you get off work and then you can act a fool or whatever. So if anybody's got any experiences dealing with knuckleheads, bullies, goofballs who want to push their weight around, throw the weight around, let me know in the comments. Tell me how you handled it. In my case, the supervision heard it. They saw that it was getting heated. They came over and they intervened and I'm glad they did. And they separated us and now unfortunately, now there's a rift. We can't necessarily work together because there's a, obviously there's a personality conflict. It's sad, it's stupid, it's immature. I wish it wasn't the case, but I'm always gonna go to work and do my job. Now, if I see him at work, I don't have to talk to him. He's not really in my sphere of influence. I just do my job. So if there's a personal problem, that's his personal problem because I don't have a personal problem with him. Professionally, I'm there to do my job. Personally, we don't have to be friends. I'm there to work. Tell me if you guys feel the same way. Holler back at me. If you're there to make a paycheck and not tolerate BS, say it in the comments. If you're a bully and you like pushing people around and throwing your weight around, say it in the comments. Uh, if you want to be a driver or a supervisor, say it in the comments. How long have you been at UPS? Don't forget to tell me what the title of that song was. If you're there for less than 30 days, let me know how it's going. Um, I know there's been some people commenting on they've been they just got hired and this is going on that's going on. I saw some of your comments and I responded to some of your comments about uh, what what you can and can't do and what you're going to do, what to be expected, what your attire is and stuff like that. Um, if you're new and you're within 30 days, you got that blue vest on. Don't give up. Hang in there. You're going to be fine if this is what you want. The good thing about it is those first 30 days, you get a feel for UPS to see if it's for you. They get a feel for you to see if you're hanging with the with the program and that you're getting it you know, understood uh, how you can do it right and work safely and work as a team and all that kind of stuff. 
again, tempers flare. It's a hot environment. People were making excuses for that kid saying, oh, well, it was hot that day. And I'm like, that's no excuse. You can't yell and curse at people. I don't care if it's hot or not. There's no excuse. You don't talk to people crazy at work. You don't yell at people. You don't curse at people. You don't threaten people. It's unacceptable. I don't care if it's 100 degrees outside. That's not an excuse to say I can talk to you any old way I want to. It's unacceptable. And I'm telling you that because this is supposed to be a professional environment and some people don't understand that. You will run once in a while run into an immature person or a person who brings their attitude to work, a negative attitude to work, instead of a professional attitude, a safe attitude. If you're going to act that way, that's creating an unsafe work environment. So they separated us. I work in another line now. It's kind of boring. It's less work over there. So I have to actually go look for stuff to do to try to stay actively engaged because I'm still doing bulk, but it's just less bulk on the other lines. On the on that line, there was a lot of bulk, so I was really active, sweating, moving constantly. Um, and I don't know where this kid came from. I really don't. He just wanted to test me. It was a bad day for him. Um, for me, I didn't care because I'm just like, bro, you need to back up. You need to get out of here. You need to stop yelling at me and stop cursing at me because I'm not the one and you have sometimes you gotta and this kid this kid is 19 years old I'm in my 50s like bro really you know what I mean go home and do your homework all right so that all being said I'm not gonna say anybody's name and I'm not gonna you know embarrass nobody the bottom line is you're gonna run into some stuff like that sometimes how did you handle it or I'm telling you the best way to handle it Get supervision involved, get the union involved. Try to walk away, try to cool off, try to count to 10. I know it's hard because like I did, I was in my area, I don't have to leave. I don't have to walk away, I'm working. I'm in my workspace. I'm working and doing my job. So if someone comes to me and starts running their mouth, you need to leave. I'm in my workspace. Why are you over here in my workspace bothering me when I'm doing the job that I was hired to do? Your job is not to come over here and talk to me and yell at me and try to belittle me. Your job is to go do whatever it is you got hired to do. And that's how I handled it. Now, when I said it, I didn't say it whispering it. I, I kind of meant his equal level of his voice was here. My voice was here. And I was like, go, go somewhere with that nonsense. It's unprofessional and I'm not here to tolerate it. And I'm not going to be bullied or pushed around, especially by some 19 year old kid. Peace out. So that's what I got today, man. I hope I kept this short. I'm driving on the freeway. Uh, and I got to go get some coffee. I got to work tonight. And uh, let me know about your side hustle. Let me know if you know the, the title of that song. Let me know if you got 30 days or less on. And let me know um, if you've had any issues with immature people at work, people who like to bully people or throw their weight around or use their seniority in a way that's not appropriate. That's all I got, man. Thank you guys for watching. Always, at all times, Staff Sergeant Calhoun out. Peace.